Hey everyone, it is late at night and I am Norman. Tonight we're talking about shock absorption systems that are built into mechanical watches. So let us begin. The beginnings of mechanical watches as we know them today actually have their roots in pocket watches. Those timepieces were much larger than the wristlets, later called watches, that came after them. And they were typically worn within the pocket of vests or similar locations. And they usually had a chain attached to them so that they don't get lost. When women, and later men after World War I, began wearing watches on their wrists, an interesting problem surfaced. You see, when a watch is worn in a pocket, it never really gets knocked around being so close to the body. However, when a watch is worn on the wrist, it's really easy to bump it into something, and being smaller, they're actually easier to drop. And when either of these events occurred, it was very likely that the watch was going to break, mainly due to the amazingly small posts on the balance wheel. Why are these posts so small? because the balance wheel needs to be able to spin freely with as little friction as absolutely possible. So to accomplish this, the large weight balanced wheel is held in place by two extremely thin posts, one above and one below the wheel. In 1929, a solution to this problem was devised by two engineers, Fritz Marty and Georges Bonschweig. I'm sure I botched those names. It was Fritz Marty who came up with the system and he joined forces with Georges to create a company to manufacture the idea. The company's original name was Porte et Chapmont Universal SA. In 1933, they patented a more complete version of the idea. At that time, it was trademarked under the name Incoblock. And later, this became a company by the same name. The Incoblock devices were designed to be self-contained units that could be added to existing movements. 300,000 units were shipped in 1935. And by the 1970s, 36 million units were being produced every year. However, this isn't the only shock absorption system out there. A company called Kif Parashock also produces them. Also, ETA produces their own called Edashock, as does Rolex. Theirs is called Paraflex. In the Japanese market, Citizen produces Parashock and Seiko produces Diashock. The Inca block system consists of five components, and it also takes advantage of the balance wheel post anatomy. Those five components are the cap spring, the cap jewel, the mobile bushing, the mobile bushing jewel, and the end piece. The idea is that the cap jewel and mobile bushing jewel move as one, held in place by the mobile bushing. Here's how it protects against vertical impact. When the watch receives a vertical shock, the delicate balance wheel post pushes up the cap jewel. This causes the mobile bushing to move up and the cap spring bends to allow for this movement. The genius lies in how it takes advantage of the post's anatomy. The delicate tip of the post passes through the mobile bushing jewel, which fits snugly around it. However, closer to the balance wheel, the post becomes much thicker and therefore less prone to breaking. This part of the post passes through a larger hole in the end piece in the mobile bushing. However, the post gets even wider beneath this section. This stops the vertical motion of the balance wheel, sparing the delicate end of the post. And here's how it protects against horizontal impacts. When a shock occurs that would normally snap off the post due to a sideways motion, two aspects of the Inca block step in to prevent this. The first is the wider opening in the mobile bushing and the end piece, as well as the wider portion of the post that passes through these two openings. Also note the funnel shape of the end piece and the mobile bushing. This makes sideways movement possible, and it also ensures that after a shock, the whole system returns to normal, returning the post to its centered position so the balance wheel can continue to function normally. The wider portion of the post moves horizontally, striking the sides of the wider openings in the mobile bushing and the end piece. The mobile bushing moves along with it, alleviating the sideways force on the post end. For diagonal impacts, a combination of these two actions occurs. 
It's absolutely brilliant in its simplicity. If you would like to see how it works demonstrated on an oversized model of an Inkablock system, be sure to check out the YouTube links that I've put below in my description. Those were done by Chronoglide, and they are phenomenal. Competing shock systems vary mainly in the design of their cap spring. However, the principle is pretty much identical. For example, with the Inkablock system, the mobile bushing has a gutter that goes all the way around its top edge, with two gaps used to insert and remove the cap spring. The tab at the base of the cap spring is inserted into one of these gaps. Then the two arms of the spring are pinched inward and tucked into the gutter. The Kif Parashock system operates similarly. However, the mobile bushing doesn't have a gutter, but rather three notches cut into its top. So they operate in exactly the same way, except that the cap spring has a different shape and the mobile bushing has a different means of securing that spring. The engineering genius and clever problem solving that is found in watchmaking is absolutely fascinating. In the industry, solution to knocking or dropping a watch is a perfect example of the brilliance that is hidden within these seemingly simple time-telling machines that we strap to our wrists. Thanks for watching. Thank you.